I'm Jamie with Chag Tutors. Today I want to talk to you about elasticity, an important property of materials that engineers need to use to study materials design, selecting materials, and theoretical problems about more complicated bodies, especially in three dimensions. When a material is elastic, or in its elastic range, it resists a stress or other distortion and returns to its original size or shape when the stress is removed. Now, no material is perfectly elastic. It's all going to deform a little bit, but there's no permanent deformation in this idealized world. And in other words, it acts like a spring. It springs right back to its original shape and size. Why is elasticity important? Well, we need it for materials design. We need to know how strong a material has to be so that it doesn't deform permanently. For example, if we're designing a building, we need to know what forces different parts of the building, different beams, different, um, different other structural components are going to be subjected to. And from that force, we can determine some of the stresses that are, they're going to be subjected to. We also need to determine the strains that a material is going to be subjected to. And using that, we can select materials, for example, different grades of steel, or in a biological application, different types of rubber or tissues, where um, the material is going to be able to withstand the stresses and strains and forces that it's going to be subjected to. Here's a way using a stress-strain diagram that we can determine the elastic modulus of a material and when its breaking point is going to be reached. When past that point, there's going to be permanent deformation. In other words, it's in the plastic range. Looking at this stress-strain diagram, the stress is on the y-axis, and this is just the force per unit area. We say per unit area because we have to adjust for the shape of the material. If we just consider the force, well, it's going to be a lot more impactful if it's on a tiny, thin rod than if it's on a big pillar. In the same way, we have to consider the strain. The same amount of deformation, that delta L, is going to affect a small rod much more than a larger rod. If you have a rod that's a meter long and you deform it by two centimeters, no big deal. But if you have a rod that's three centimeters long and you deform it by two centimeters, it's probably reaching its elastic limit. We can read the elastic modulus off this stress-strain curve by looking at the region over here where the stress-strain curve is linear. The slope of this region is the elastic modulus, and the point, which is the red one here, where this, the stress-strain curve stops being linear is the elastic limit. Beyond this port point, we're going to get permanent deformation of the material. Now, let's think about some important factors that are affecting elasticity. The presence of cracks makes materials more brittle. In other words, it lowers the elastic modulus and lowers the points where there's going to be permanent deformation. Temperature also affects elasticity, but it's a lot harder to predict. In some materials, temp increased temperature will decrease the elasticity. In some materials, especially something like rubber or other polymers, increased temperature will increase the elasticity. You have to think about molecular properties, go all the way down to the molecular level, and think about the lattices that atoms and molecules are in and the energies that are corresponding to. Now, you're going to encounter stress strain and elasticity problems in three dimensions where you need to consider the three-dimensional stress tensor and the strain tensor. It gets a lot more complicated in that case, and we can go through that at another time. Intuitively, though, the most important thing to understand is that stress and strain are both determined experimentally via tensile and torsion tests, for example, and we need to use that information in a practical way to select materials that are going to be appropriate for the application we need. Of course, we want to be safe, so we're going to be conservative in how we figure out the stresses and strains that a material can withstand, so that even if it's more than we expect in, in real life, the material, the building, whatever it is, will still be safe. Thanks for watching, and more later.